Hi, I'm Denise Lewis, Olympic champion for the heptathlon from the Sydney Olympic Games. And it's my pleasure being here doing this athletics takeover today. Um, I've got loads of questions, uh, which I'm going to try and rattle through. Um, first question up is uh, obviously very topical. Um, and I'm not sure who it's come from, but naturally with the events that have happened in British athletics at the moment, the first one is... What are your thoughts on the resignations of Joe Coates and Sarah Symington? Uh, what do UK athletics have to do to ensure the sport can move forward with both athletes and coaches feeling supported? Wow, <laughs> where do you start? Well, firstly, um, yeah, sorry to see Joe Coates go. Um, I've met her several times through her time in netball, that she did a great job with England netball and the successes they've had. Um, my feelings are very much that it took everyone by surprise. It was a big shock. Um, yes, athletes, athletes have had its problems the last few years, well documented. Um, I just felt at the moment, while the athletes are really hurting, the sport at the moment in, in the UK is in a little bit of disarray. It was really, um, uh, bad timing in terms of the comms, you know, the communication between athletes. You may have seen a lot of the Twitter reactions from our best athletes. Um, yeah, not really the way to go about business. I just feel that, you know, maybe there could have been some preempting of strategy, um, exit route. Um, so really shocked very disappointed um sarah in particular I'm not meaning to get too personal but you know it feels like you know bad relationship partner finds a new new partner and has left the old one you know dumbfounded you know it was so quick left one sport and she's already got a job that just feels a bit weird for me um you know by everybody and I'm, I'm great because i'm going back to what i really love someone who's been in the sport less than a year in her role is less than a year and just feels like she didn't really have the heart for athletics and commit and we don't need that athletics needs um passionate people people that are for the sport and want to see it move forward so i guess we don't really know the ins and outs of what's gone on who who decided that it was time on this uh partnership um, but I think it's left a, a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. And if you're fans of the sport, you're probably thinking, what the hell is going to go happen next? Um, we've had just a lot of things go on very publicly in recent times. And I just think we need a period of settled, concerted efforts in making the sport and the athletes and coaches feel good, but not losing sight that performance is everything. You know, we need to perform at the best levels. We need great competitions for our um, up and coming athletes. And that strategy needs to be put into place very quickly. Um, we've got Paris, it's stones throw away. Um, and all this uncertainty isn't really good for preparation. Um, next question. What's your view on the legacy of British athletics post uh, London 2012 and can Birmingham 22 produce something similar next year? Well, the answer is yes. I think the legacy from London was, was great. Um, I think there may be some issues, some things that could have been capitalised more. Um, we need to really look at, at coaching. Uh, I think the club structure in, 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 in British athletics needs a little look at. Um, yeah, but can Birmingham really deliver on building that sort of energy and enthusiasm for, for sport, absolutely. Can athletics benefit? Yes, it can. And I really do look forward to seeing um, not only our well-established names, our household names competing, but really an opportunity for that very vital age of transitioning from sort of under 20s um, through to the senior ranks, whether they get an opportunity to really compete and get a taste for what it's like to be in really big competitions, international recognized competitions. So naturally it's, um, I, I, I can't put into words how excited I am and I'm looking forward to next year. Birmingham is my patch, the West Midlands. I've got such fond memories of my time being 
uh, uh, Birchfold Harrier. I'm a lifetime like lifetime member there, and that stadium is just going to erupt and rock. You know, if you've been watching the developments of the the stadium and the building work, uh, you know, we're in a good place. So can't wait. Roll on 2022. Um, what would you say was the proudest moment of your career and how did it feel? Um, gosh, I've had a couple of pride moments, if I'm honest. Um, not only Sydney, Sydney was just terrific and, you know, just blew my emotions up. You know, I, I was so many, so many positive feelings. Um, um, but also my first Commonwealth Games was was something to to really be proud of. You know, I went into that competition as hopeful, just wanting to some affirmation that I was had what it takes to to compete on the world stage and and delivering there a gold medal when I absolutely didn't see that coming uh, was a big deal for me. Um, and I'm going to squeeze in a third one because this really was um, seismic. Although I didn't compete, but the London 2012 Games were epic for me. Just being part of that presentation team with uh, Lord Coe, Atel, um, it was just, just the best. You just knew it was going to deliver on all accounts um, and transform how people saw sport and view sport and engaged with it. And it ticked every box. Um, and obviously having our Super Saturday just was just the icing on the cake. So. That was terrific. Um, is there any desire to add events to the heptathlon amongst the top athletes? And if it were to happen, would what would be the best way for it to be phased in? <laughs> it's funny you have had that as a question because um, I've recently interviewed uh, probably four of the best heptathletes um, that we've had. Um, grace, grace the circuit, if you like, for the last 40 years. And um, without doing any spoilers, um, they unanimously said that no, heptathlon is, is great the way it is. It's um, difficult. You, you, the amount of injuries I've had, you can see that it's um, it's not easy to navigate. Um, and I think the other the other heptathletes, of which one of them was Jackie Joyner Kersey, was concurred. She's like, whoa, the seven are great. It offers, you know, everything you're looking for. It's dynamic. The, the, the events um, check and challenge enough. And so um, I, there is no real desire to add. So if that was the sneaky way of asking whether we want decathlon in, the answer is no, thank you. You'd be good. Um, the next question is, where is the fountain of youth in Javelin in Great Britain? Good question. I have no clue. Um, I know I watch online on the socials, there's a training group that I follow and they seem to be doing some good stuff, but we seem to have lost that legacy. We really have men and women's and I don't know why. Um, personally, I don't think it's that difficult to teach. It's a su superb event. I love it. It's actually probably one of my favorite events to watch. Um, and so maybe it's just the appetite of the youth coming in. Um, again, I would look to the club structure and, and ask, what are we doing when athletes are walking through the door? What are we teaching them? Are we, we allowing them just to specialize too soon? Maybe there's some unearthed talent in, you know, in another event that an athlete could possibly be a super javelin thrower. But yeah, I'd like to rekindle that love affair with javelin because it is a phenomenal event. Um, should the heptathlon world record be reset due to the javelin changes? Um, I said this years ago. I think what the, the millennium, which we would have been very handy for yours truly, um, that they should have changed the, the heptathlon world record. I think that was a great opportunity to do so. I can't see how that is going to be reset now, personally. So, opportunity missed. Um, who was your favourite British and international athlete of all time and why? Oh, dear, oh dear, that is a nice question. Um, favourite? Favourite's got to be that rogue <laughs> Daley Thompson. I love him to bits, I really do. Um, I think his charisma 
you know, during the 80s, um, for me as, a, as a, a young kid watching for the first time, there was just something about him, you know, not only that bushy tash, but, you know, his fearlessness in the decathlon and just the cheekiness in which he went about his business. Um, world's greatest. Yeah, hands down. He was superb. Um, so could he roll into the international athlete? Possibly, possibly, but we've had so many great performances, but it's it's a consistency that people look to, isn't it, really? Um, hmm, that's not an easy question. David Radisha, all time, that's hard as well. Uh, Cool. I'll have to come back to you on that one. Didn't have time to really think of that one. There's been so many. That's not an easy question to add. Um, moving on. What were your memories of going to Wolverhampton and Bilston Athletics Club as a child? And was that where the journey to Olympic gold started? I would say absolutely. And I didn't even know it. Um, I loved Wolverhampton and Bilston. As I said, I walked through the doors at the age of eight. I was told to come back um, 12 months later because I was almost too young to join. So I waited literally for that year and I was back through the doors and said, please, can I sign up? And what was important for me, which kept me coming back, was that my coach at the time, Bill Hand, who is no longer with us, made it fun. He was warm. He wasn't thinking about, oh, I've got the next talented individual. Let me you know, let me just focus on, on her. He just saw, I've got a child here. Let them have fun. Let her have fun. Enjoy being part of a group and learning some new skills. And it was as simple as that. And so I look forward to going every Tuesday, Thursday and, and Sunday mornings just to be part of that little group. We had fun and Bill was really entertaining and he kind of got it. And so I think he kept me in the game. I was I bored my eyes out when I had to move on because that was the structure we had in the club at the time. So you didn't hold on to athletes when they learned enough of the basic skills. You moved them on and you developed them through the club. Um, but I was gutted to, to leave him. But yeah, that coupled with watching our international athletes at the time really did. Um, yeah, make me fall in love with with the sport. It was a, a good time. Happy memories. Um, what was your favourite and least favourite training exercise for heptathlon? Well, if you know me, you know I hate anything endurance. That's, that was me at the time. I really didn't just, I was just thought I was a speed athlete. So I just didn't want to have um, to do any endurance running. But I, I grew to embrace it. I loved um, going out into the forest and doing a run eventually. Um, I remember, um, did I like weights? Sort of, yeah, I grew to like weights as well. You know, when you're sort of 18 to 20, I was just like, oh gosh, this is just too much. It hurts. Um, but yeah, I grew to love that too. So, um, so I'd, I'd say you've got to learn to love all of it really, because you just don't know which bit's going to make the difference. And so for me, I would say my absolute favorite, you know, I did enjoy javelin. Um, I loved long jumping. So, yeah, I just don't think, I don't think there was anything that I disliked, to be honest, in the end. I just knew that was your job. You just got to get on with it and, and learn to embrace your training in all its aspects. I had to do a lot of feet exercises because I had very, um, I got flat feet, so had to do a lot of sand work so cold sand um was not really the most fun thing to do but a lot of feet exercises in the sand that was a bit um laborious but again needs must um next question if you could only focus on one discipline which one would it be well, unfortunately, I'm, I was not as, as fabulous as, as Jess was, Jess Ennis Hill in the hurdles. So she, <laughs> that would have been her number one, I'm sure. Um, Javelin was a good event for me. 
I think I could have been a javelin thrower. Yeah. Let, let's go out all out in javelin. But also maybe maybe long jump. That was one of my favourites because I've been doing that event the most. So maybe I would have focused on, on long jump a bit more. With um, October being Black History Month, how do you feel about representation with athletics and what needs to improve in the future? Um, yes, it is Black History Month, um, an important month in the calendar. And, and, and I think it's, it's therefore to educate our youngsters about um, history, that which is omitted, I think, a lot in the, the sort of British history. You know, I don't remember in any history lessons doing much about um, about why uh, black people came to be in the UK. And so, and also the many inventors, um, politicians, um, people of note that really have just been omitted from British history. So this month is an opportunity to celebrate the, that knowledge that has been missing very much in in a lot of people's um, learning and also celebrating the current um, successes in black culture. Um, so I think it's a great month. And in athletics, um, we, have, we have to champion the things that we're really good at. And ours is the one few sports that is very, very diverse um, and inclusive. And I think that's something to be celebrated. Um, always and what we're seeing in all industries is that uh, we don't have enough people of color maybe sitting on at board level that would probably be one argument and um, that's uh, i guess across across the board but um we're not in a bad place i think uh, we, we we constantly trying to evolve and have these conversations so um we we're in a good place um People's question was about how many how many women we have coaching now that I could go to town on because we need to really improve that that's for sure. Um, how does being a TV pundit compare to competing? Um, there's no comparison. Come on, that's uh, that's <laughs> obvious. Competing is is just everything. Um, but I do enjoy being a TV pundit. I I um, I get really. I guess that those feelings that you get before the night of a competition, I have those too, because I'm, I'm kind of curious, wondering how our, our British athletes are going to perform. Um, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm bringing my A game as well, um, try and get as enough, enough sleep, because it's always going to be, uh, you know, a lot of hours that we have to fill. And so, um, yeah, there's, a, there's some similarities, but yeah, competing is, is, is a different level. It's amazing. Um, and what is your best moment you've seen? Ah, oh, best moment you've seen live. Um, gosh, that's really a hard question. I mean, I've been fortunate to sort of commentate and, and be pundits for three Olympics, uh, world championships, Commonwealth Games. Naturally, I loved seeing watching Katarina Johnson Thompson become world champion. That was just the most awesome feeling. You know, um, I could have cried with joy. I was so proud of her. Um, she managed to get everything together. It was was fantastic to watch. Dina becoming world champion. That these are highlights. Um, but equally, I mean, I could go on. I mean, how much time have we got? Holly getting her bronze in pole vault, Holly um, Bradshaw. I mean, that's, that was just awesome. <sighs> Keely, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I could be, be here for quite a while, but obviously they're the classics, you know, David Udisha in 2012, Jess in 2012, Michael Johnson back in 96, awesome. Sally winning in 92. Linford also I mean we've had some great successes over the years um almost too many to mention and I haven't even said the b word I haven't even said bolt I mean yeah that's got to be in the top top five for sure world records that he's set they've just been awesome I mean this year has been phenomenal as well Cindy McLaughlin um Rojas in the women's triple jump it just the list goes on Warhome 
let's move on because we could be here forever and I can't just pick out one because that's not what I do. I can't choose and I can be very indecisive, but you get, you get the picture. Um, how did I feel when I retired? And this is a bit of dour one to end, end our chat, isn't it? But um, yeah, gutted, lost, disillusioned for a little while. And I guess the next part of that question was, um, was it a balance between being afraid to stop against the stress of competition? No, I always said that, you know, if you're spending more time on the physio bed than I was able to train, then it, it's, it's time. You've just got to call time. And unfortunately, I had a few two injuries um, that I had to battle with. Um, my feet ended up being a real problem. My left foot, which is the one I injured um, many years ago and, and prior to Sydney, obviously the Achilles and everything, but the foot, the bones in the feet were a real issue. And so that called time on my athletics career. Um, but you know what? You can't have any regrets. I had a super, super career. Um, yeah, I, those things I could have, I missed, you know, two silvers in the world championships. That still bothers me to this day. But, you know, you've got to be blessed if you're involved in athletics. It's a, it's a wonderful life. I've made lifelong friends. I've traveled the world. Um, I enjoyed the process of challenging myself, trying to find the best rhythm and unlock my training and my potential. And yeah, I did all right. So no regrets. Um, but yeah, when the body starts letting you down, it's, it's really tough to take. Um, I wish I wish I could be immortal, but sadly I'm not. Just me. But life moves on. <laughs>